I have an upcoming project or a task in which a steady rest on my lathe is going to be pretty important to have. I bought this steady rest, or should I say what's left of a steady rest, a while back. I got it pretty cheap because it's missing a whole heck of a lot of parts. As you can see, it's missing the bed clamp. And someone thought that these bright red plastic thumb screws would be a suitable replacement for the originals and although they're functional it's not going to do. Fortunately many of their critical components are present. These uh, brass jaws for example I do have all three of them. Unfortunately I am missing all three of the adjustment knobs. I am also missing the three adjustment screws that uh, tie the jaws and the adjustment jaw together so that they function properly. I have some 7 16th inch drill rod that I am going to use to make three new adjustment screws. I've been doing a little bit of CAD work in Fusion 360 based on some dimensions and information I got from some folks online and I think this is a pretty decent recreation of how the original was made. This uh, 3D printed version is just so I can feel it and see if it's how I want this to be made. I'll end up turning it from steel. The first thing I want to do here to get the steady rest up and running is to make the three adjustment screws. The adjustment screw is about three inches long. About two and a half inches of that will be threaded with a left handed thread. The screw is 7 16 inch in diameter, but it's a 10 TPI thread, which is very unusual today. From what I understand, the 7 16 10 was a national special thread designation. That isn't found anywhere today. I couldn't even find reference to that thread system in a 1941 edition of the Machinery's Handbook. If you know more about this National Special Thread designation, drop a comment down below. I'd love to know a little bit more about it. I'm going to start here by facing off the end of the drill rod and then drilling for tailstock center. I'm going to be cutting threads that are two and a half inches long and I feel like there's going to be quite a bit of tool pressure so having some support with a live center I think is going to be absolutely necessary. I'm thinking a follow rest might even be a better solution but I don't have one of those either. Using some blue dicum to blue up the length of the piece, I want to scribe some lines for some reference points. 
funny you don't notice it when you're sitting in front of the lathe as I do right now how much run out this three jaw chuck has this thing must be pretty well worn out I'll use the tip of this threading insert just to scribe a line in the circumference of the drill rod at three inches and at about two and a half inches. To help account for some of the run out, I'm loosening the jaws of the chuck. So when I bring in the tailstock live center, it will help give me a little more concentricity. I'm using a grooving cutoff tool to cut some thread relief. I will be threading away from the chuck since these are left hand threads. Based on the math, the thread should be about 70 thousandths of an inch deep. That difference between the major pitch diameter and the minor pitch diameter. So I'll cut this groove a little bit more than 70 thousandths deep to um, have room for the insert to fit in. I'm probably running the lathe a little bit too fast, which I think is why I'm getting uh, so much chatter here. I'm still learning how to use carbide inserts and proper feeds and speeds. It could also be the tool height wasn't set correctly. I monkey with these from time to time to try to get the best results I can and often I end up making it worse. So again, I still have a lot to learn. Before I start cutting the threads, I want to put a nice, healthy, steep chamfer on the uh, end of the material first. I said. Since I'm going to be cutting these threads away from the chuck, I need to adjust my compound to 29 and a half degrees in the opposite direction. A trick I saw on a YouTube video somewhere was to use a one, two, three block between the tool post and the chuck to make sure that it's aligned square to the workpiece. But the part of the trick I missed was to make sure that the dovetails were actually in the right spot.
I'm using a mag base and one of my federal dial indicators here on the back of the tool post. I'll use this to get a direct reading of just how far forward I am moving the cutting tool. The first thing I want to do is touch off with the thread cutting tool and set all my zeros. On the lathe's gear train, there's a sliding gear that, depending on how you have it set, adjusts the feed rate and also the thread TPI. And it just so happens that this combination has that sliding gear in the position that it really makes a horrible racket. It's fairly quiet when that sliding gear is out, but for whatever reason, when it's in, it just makes this terrible noise. With the quick change gearbox set to 10 TPI, I'll cut a scratch pass. You can really see here now how much run out this chuck has. I'm going to have to deal with this at some point. However, I think for this particular project, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Well, everything checked out with the thread pitch gauge, so now it's time to start cutting some threads. I'm advancing the tool three thousandths at a time and engaging the half nut at any one of the whole numbers. I just have to be paying close attention and make sure I disengage those half nuts before the tool crashes into my live center. Once I've disengaged the half nuts, I back the cross slide out enough to where I can use the carriage to move the tool back down to where my thread relief area was. I return the cross slide to my zero and then advance the threading tool with the compound. Well, to be perfectly honest, this is only the second, maybe third time that I've ever cut threads on this lathe. So I'm taking my time. This is going to take a little while. Uh, you might be able to do this a lot faster than, than I can, but uh, I'm going to take my time and make sure I don't crash this tool or end up engaging the half nuts at the wrong spot. Well, it's pretty warm here where I'm 
at in Ohio and the GoPros got too hot and shut themselves off. So I lost a lot of footage of me checking these threads uh, a couple of times before now. I'm about 82 thousandths of an inch deep here, which is a lot deeper than what the math suggested I should be going. I'm not sure exactly um, why that is. It may have something to do with that national special thread designation. I'm just making uh, a last a couple of spring passes here and then we'll deburr the threads and check it for fit in one of the steady rest jaws. Just using a standard file here to smooth off the peaks of the threads and also give it a little bit of a deburr. I'm using one of the jaws from the steady rest to check these threads rather than measuring them. It's a little tight at the top, but I think that'll be just fine. It'll rarely be that far in. So I think this is going to work perfectly. And because that thread went in a little deeper than I expected, uh, the thread relief groove got a little bit mangled. So I'll use my grooving cutoff tool to clean that up a bit. I'll use the same tool to cut it to length. I'm just going to start this groove right now while the tailstock is still supporting the piece. Before I cut it off completely, I'll use a 60 degree tool. I need to buy a regular chamfering tool one of these days or grind one. I'll use this 60 degree uh, insert to put a little bit of a chamfer on the end. With the tailstock live center pulled away, I'll use the grooving tool again to cut it off to length. One of these days, I'll get a little bit better at this art known as cutting off. Uh, I am having just way more chatter than what I expect. I don't know if it's the um, RPM of the lathe, it's a new insert, or if it's just the material or what it is, but I need to try to figure out why I have so much chatter. I openly admit that I am a novice at this, so if you see what I'm doing wrong or can offer some suggestions, please leave me a comment. Um, I enjoy learning. I accept criticism when it's delivered, you know, in a positive way. So feel free to educate me a little. Well, this is driving me up a wall. So I'm going to check the tool height here and, and make any kind of minor adjustments using the life center and the tailstock as a guide.
Well, that certainly helped uh, quite a bit. Um, I think if I s maybe slow down the lathe, it might have been even better. Well, that was the sound of a broken insert. So one way to learn the right and wrong way to do this, I suppose, is to spend a bunch of money on carbide inserts. Well, rather than continue to try to fight this thing, since I can't figure out why it's chattering so much, um, I'm switching back to my high-speed steel cutoff tool. I just reground this and honed it, so it should do a better job. And Pinochle. Is that the right game? I forget. Well, I swapped this around, uh, putting in some copper shims on the three jaw so I can clean the nib off of the end of this screw now. So I think the lathe work is complete. It's far from perfect, but it does fit inside the jaw. So now I just need to put in some more stock and make two more. Well, there we go. Uh, these parts are now complete. Um, they didn't come out as good as I would have liked, but I admit that I am still learning. The surface finish on the thread is uh, fairly poor. However, it they do uh, thread into the um, steady rest jaws, and that's the most important part. I'm looking forward to making the remaining parts for this. I'm sure I'll continue to learn as I go. As always, if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber and hit that bell icon so you'll know when a new video is posted. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.